Hello and welcome to the 5 Info Show. I'm your host, Lieutenant Vince Lewis of the Phoenix Police Public Affairs Bureau, coming to you once again from police headquarters in downtown Phoenix. And I'd like to welcome my guest today, Public Information Sergeant Phil Krinsky. Welcome back to the show, Phil. Thank you. Thank you for having me again. It's always a pleasure. Yeah, awesome. Well, so today we're going to talk about a couple of things. Uh, I wanted to bring up a recent topic that was brought to our attention. This is kind of a valley-wide effort to address a particular group of individuals who are from, we, we've determined that they're from, they're from another country, but they've figured out uh, a way to do, uh, basically do a string of burglaries, home burglaries, and uh, we'll get to the details and where they're from and so forth, but I wanted to address that. Um, you can share with us uh, information that uh, investigators are okay with you sharing. Uh, but we also want to address just some tips and tricks for securing our homes and properties uh, from property crimes. We know that property crime is a crime of opportunity, uh, but we want to do our best to reduce or eliminate those opportunities and secure our stuff so that it's there when we get home, so that it stays with us uh, throughout uh, our, our time with it. But Phil, uh, introduce me to this group as you've heard them uh, heard about them referred to uh, we're referring to them as the South American theft group is or is there anything other term we're talking about but let me know about this this group yeah so there's been they've been referred to a couple things especially the current trend right now that um, they're specifically targeting homes in the evenings when people are expected to be let's say at dinner and so forth on the weekends um, uh, so it's been in different parts of the valley however there's been a few cases here in Phoenix that uh, seem to kind of match the MO the modus operandi Brandi to this. Um, so it's nice because there's a task force that's kind of been formed where their agencies are talking not just locally but also with the FBI, uh, just making sure they're sharing information and tracking these individuals if they're hitting different areas, which it looks like they may be. Okay, so they're making entry into the homes. Are they choosing a particular route or door or style? I mean, how, how are they getting in? Uh, so it looks like they're purposely trying to target like the back of the home and their Arcadia door. Um, now their, their goals are to not to be there um, or enter the home when nobody's there. So they, they typically want to be in there, in and out. They are looking specifically for items of value, jewelry, cash, credit cards, and so forth. Granted, they're not limited to that, but that looks what their primary goals are. Okay, so they're in. They're hitting it quick. They're getting in there, grabbing the little things that they know that they can move, and then they're getting out. Correct. Okay, so I want to talk about the different styles here now. I know you mentioned the Arcadia door, rear door. So there's pros and cons to having a, a yard that, let's just say, has full access to maybe like a green belt or a, or a golf course. That you would think that with enough lighting and exposure, people should see suspicious behaviors in those backyards and things. Conversely, you might have a home with a high wall that you know it provides some security, but it also provides concealment. What, what are your thoughts on the two different environments and how to secure them? Uh, well, I think the biggest thing about it is making sure like the design and the visibility and also using local te the technology we have now, alarms and the camera systems are, I think are very big. Um, but it goes even before individuals get into the backyard. I think uh, being a good neighbor, uh, making sure that you're aware of the people around there, you report suspicious activity. Again, you know your neighborhood the best, and I think when you see something that's out of place, just letting us know, because our simple presence driving through, looking for people that, again, you've described, uh, it sometimes can be a good deterrent as well. Okay, let's talk about the people, because I know we don't want to say all South Americans, blah, 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 you know, that's obviously, that's not that's not correct or, or and it's unfair but what we're looking for is behaviors right uh, correct and and like I said what you're looking for is individuals again that uh, they're walking uh, let's say with no particular sense of where they're at or belonging to a particular home they're just simply in the area walking around and casing which will let people notice they're looking at a house but again not making contact with people that live there yeah so they're not gonna be walking around dressed like the hamburger carrying a big bag that says loot uh, and a mask and you know they're not going to be trying they maybe they're not going to be trying doors but they're they're clearly something will stand out raise the back the hair on the back of your neck 
something will look out of place with the behavior, right? Absolutely, and it's one of those things where they're trying to fit in, they're trying to, to mix in, so they, they don't want to stick out. Um, so, but again, you knowing your neighborhood and who should be there and not be there, especially in some of these gated communities where there isn't a lot of traffic, um, again, go with that gut feeling that you have because a lot of times it's it's true. So what about, what if they're not on foot? What if they're in a car? Uh, same thing if it's a vehicle that, again, you're not familiar with, you don't see, uh, again, get the description. If you can get a plate number, uh, call it in. Uh, again, that information, even if we don't make contact with them, uh, there are ways that we can document that. And, and again, that's something that can be very helpful uh, if there was a burglary that occurred or, or occurs later. Uh, those, are, those are leads that our detectives can follow. All right, so I'm at home and I'm gonna go out and check the mail. And as I'm walking to the mailbox, I see a car that doesn't look familiar to me and perhaps there's somebody sitting in it, car running or otherwise, one or two people in there and they're looking at my neighbor's house. What, what do I do? What do I do with that? Uh, you know what, make that mental note, write down that information and again, call it in. Uh, it's one of those things that you can let the, the uh, 911 operators know that the vehicle has left, but you just want to make that information known to the officers because again, it, these trends, they come and go, um, but that information of seeing a vehicle in that neighborhood with that a specific plate number description is a tip that can probably help a detective uh, identify these individuals. So they're not going to have South American plates. So what, what, I mean, do I take a photo of the plate and send that in or do I go up, knock on the window and ask them what they're doing or what, how far do I take it? Well, I, I definitely don't recommend that you make contact with these individuals. Again, be the best witness possible and, and letting us know that information is going to be the best. Leave that other side to, to us. All right. So we're looking for suspicious behavior, not necessarily suspicious people because people are people and, you know, they're going to have a, a myriad of reasons as to why they need to legitimately be in this location. But the stuff, that this, the behaviors is what that stands out, right? Absolutely. And that's why I'm saying follow that gut feeling, as you mentioned earlier. A lot of times it, you're, you're going to be right about it, but we're just simply gathering information uh, based on your observations. And, and again, sometimes that has led to, to capturing these people. Perfect. So, okay, let's Let's just say I'm not tech savvy and I don't have a large budget for home security. What can I do with my living space, my, my townhouse, my, my home? Maybe I'm living with another person. What can I do to the space around me to help uh, make that environment less favorable to criminal activity or property crime? Uh, well, making sure that your home, I guess it's orderly, the landscaping, uh, making sure your, your bushes are trimmed around the house or even eliminating a bush that can conceal a window or point of entry of your home. Um, sometimes some of those motion sensor lights, are, they're, they're pretty inexpensive that you can get from various places. Um, those help to detract people from coming there. Um, also, there's we can go a step further and talking to your community, There's you can make uh, watch groups in your community and that's something that you can actually get training through the department and signing up for this to help you get organized um, and, and there's even groups that uh, are able to take shifts and walk around the neighborhood so there, there's lots of programs out there you don't have to have a lot of money to do it if any at all so, okay well that's, that's great information uh, all of which I knew because you know I've been a cop for about 25 years but still I think it's great to put it into terms that you know because I'll forget and you know, I, I, I try to think along the lines of like, what would I tell my parents? What would I tell my neighbors? How do I share this information in plain terms that's going to make sense to somebody? Uh, and, you know, my kids are getting old enough now where they might go, uh, you know, they're, they're going to live on campus and for college or they're going to be, you know, looking into apartments for themselves and so forth. And I think it's valuable information. But the program itself where we're talking about changing the environment around your living space to make it less favorable to crime. Um, do you know that program? Uh, yes, yeah, so it was referred to as SEPTED, or um, it's uh, a change in the environment around you. Yeah, crime we, prevention through environmental design. Yes, thank you very much. <laughs> it's an acronym. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes, but but I mean, it's 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 simple enough to say, uh, you know, crimes of opportunity can be prevented when we remove those opportunities by mitigating those variables by doing things like you were saying. So why is it important to keep the bushes out, you know, trimmed away from my doors and windows? Uh, it, it makes the environment look lived in. You know, we talk about things like if you're going to leave for vacation, um, you, when a criminal might see, well, when we got the newspaper, newspaper stack up in the driveway, mail sticking out of the mailbox, you know, dust and dirt accumulating, uh, weeds growing, bushes getting un, unkempt. That puts out the message that this house is not lived in. And what we're trying to do is change that by making it appear 
you know, lived in, or at least well kept and watched. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I mean, use technology to your advantage as well. Uh, a lot of people now have uh, these services where you can speak to a speaker and it turns things on. Um, having something where there's a plug that you can have that turns on a light for you at night or plays music for you. So again, you want to make sure, like you said, it seems like somebody is home because again, most of the time they don't, who's ever going to strike don't want anybody inside. Them. Yeah, I thought it was a great gift to give my parents who spend half the year up north a ring doorbell, you know, and of course, without throwing out an advertisement for this particular company, there are doorbells, video doorbells available where you don't even have to be home. Yeah, and does those notifications. Um, but you, you mentioned something earlier regarding as far as communication, letting people know. Another good tool is Nextdoor. It's a type of social media app that you can get on your phone. Uh, it's just a great way to communicate with your neighborhood. It's specific, excuse me, to the neighbor that you live in. Uh, and it's a great way to share that information. Um, we as a police department use it to put information out. Um, but just keep in mind, as you're sharing that information, that's not a reporting tool. So you want to make sure you contact us or Crime Stop, uh, or if it's something active um, through 911, and make sure you report that information because that's how it's actually going to get documented. Yeah, next door is, is conversations among neighbors about um, their immediate area. It's a closed conversation. Uh, we could, like you just said, we can send bulletins, but we're not monitoring or, or that's not a primary reporting tool. Is that what you're saying? Oh yeah, it's not a reporting tool at all. It's again, it's it's a social media site to be able to share that information with each other. We will also put stuff on there to share with you. But again, make sure you contact us with that information. Um, you can make that report with a, or even a photograph of something you see that's suspicious. Um, you can also share it on that website, but make sure you contact us. And you can do online reporting and you can do anonymous reporting, right? Absolutely. Silent Witness is a great tool. Uh, again, and, and again, the information that you provide could lead to to uh, an arrest and you get compensated for it. Yeah, so excellent. So let's uh, let's kind of put a bow on this. So what's the takeaway here for securing your home, your um, your living space, your area where you spend all your time, where all your stuff is? How do I make sure that my stuff stays mine? How do I, what, what's, what's the overall takeaway here? Uh, so the best thing is to, to do as many layering as you can to prevent things from happening. So making your home less attractive for burglars, right? You want to make sure it, all points of entry are visible, uh, that there's lights. Uh, again, if you have the ability to get a, a monitoring service for alarms or even for your cameras, make sure you're utilizing those, um, making sure you have floodlights, uh, so forth in areas. Again, that could be a point of entry um, and, and communicating with your neighborhood. Uh, making sure everybody knows like, hey, he's this person's gone. So they call in the, and report any suspicious activity because when they see the officers driving around in the neighborhood, they know this is probably not the area to do these types of burglaries. You want to be active. You want to make it lived in. You want to make it uh, clean and um, you want to share that information with your neighbors. Basically, all eyes up, all out, everybody on, on alert. Uh, correct. All right. Awesome. Well, I'd like to thank my guest, uh, Sergeant Phil Krinsky, uh, PIO Sergeant Extraordinaire. For joining us talking about uh, reducing property crimes. Um, thank the crew for producing. And as always, you can help fight crime in your community by sending tips to Silent Witness. You potentially earn a cash reward. Visit silentwitness.org or call 480-WITNESS. Uh, follow us on all social media platforms. We're hiring. Go to joinphxpd.com. And as always, remember, we're all in this together. Mm -hmm.